Hi everyone, this is Konzel here. So today we will talk about the engulfing for R1 engulfing with Bell, or rather Bell with R1 engulfing, the artifact comparison and the artifact guide for her. Now I've actually run through the artifact guide options in my previous video where we talk about the artifact for the, the comparison for the catch. So this is more like a follow-up video for that where we add on the artifact comparison for R1 engulfing and R5 engulfing. So if you want to know more about the artifact 5 artifact builds, a brief quick introduction on that, you can check out the previous video, the artifact guide video. I'll put a link in the top right corner as well as in the description so you guys can check that out. Now the what we have here are the damage figures for R1 engulfing and 4 piece emblem. 2 piece gladiator with 2 piece shiminawa, 2 thundering fairy with 2 gladiator, 4 thunder silver, and 2 thundering fairy with 2 noblis. Okay, so these are the damage figures. And this is what they look like in terms of total when we just do sum it up in totality 7 seconds of burst with 7 seconds of elemental skill. All the talents are level 9. CR is 50%, 140% CD, level 9 talents versus enemies with 50% defense and 10% resist. So pretty much the standard stuff that I always do for my math. Because these are the most common enemies you meet. Well, not the most common. The most common is actually level 88 enemy, which depending on your level, the defense may change accordingly. Okay, but these are the damage figures. So notice that when it comes to R1 engulfing, because we are targeting a slightly lower ER, we are not getting the max attack cap. You don't have sufficient attacks, so the 2-piece Gladiator and 2-piece Shimina along with the 2-piece Thundering Fury with 2-piece Gladiator or Shiminawa, these two are having a slight edge across over 4-piece Thunder Silver and 2-piece Thundering Fury with 2-piece Noblis because there's not enough attack. Okay, I shouldn't say that there's not enough attack. I mean, the attack is still higher than if you were using the catch. But yeah, this is the result. You get a better boost using the artifact builds that give you attack bonus on the artifact set bonuses. But the difference is quite big. Unlike on the, uh, the catch, on the catch at this, when you see this, the difference is only 1.7 to 4% or 7.5 to 9.2% depending on the ER target 200% ER to 50% ER but for the engulfing itself we are targeting 310% R1 and the difference is already this big which makes sense right because we are maximizing we are getting the max bonus from the 4 piece emblem but when you are using engulfing you should go for 300% ER because engulfing gets so much attack from ER it makes it so worth it okay so this is why these four other artifact builds, they fall off quite a bit compared to when you're using the catch. 11%, 12.2%, 12.4%, and up to 13.9% on the two-piece Thundering Fairy, two-piece Noblis. So I hope this shows you that Emblem is an even better choice when you're using R1 Engulfing. But how about R5 Engulfing? Everything else remains the same, but it's using, you're using an R5 Engulfing weapon. Difference is slightly lower compared to uh, when you compare each of the artifact built to emblem but you notice that the order has been changed yeah so difference i'll talk about the difference first is 10 percent to ranging from 10 percent to 12.1 percent and when you're using r5 engulfing it's actually very easy to get the max cap or rather no, i shouldn't say easy but actually it is easy because you don't really need many er uh, substats from your artifacts not that much anyway so you just need to target a 314% so that 314.3% will help you a lot because you'll see the damage boost it's 10 to 12% better than the rest of the artifact builds and you'll notice that any artifact now is the other way around it completely reverse the order any artifact set bonus any artifact builds giving you attack percent as the artifact set bonus will now be the worst with the 36 percent attack being the worst 18 percent attack slightly better and the two damage bonus are slightly ahead basically 
If you notice, right, the thunder, thunder silver, and the thundering fury, and two piece no please, they are burst damage is the same, but the thunder silver wins ages out because of the elemental skill. Okay, it does better on the elemental skill. It's as simple as that. Force piece emblem actually has the worst elemental skill damage amongst these artifact builds, but because of how much of her damage is coming from her burst rather than elemental skill, you're still better off using emblem by quite a chunk of percentage. Alright, so I hope this is a good figure, good presentation of the figures to tell you between R1 and R5 which are how the artifacts are artifact builds are ranked. Okay, for engulfing. It's different it's pretty different from the uh, the catch. So for example for the catch right Thunder Silver is better than two Thundering Fury with two Gladiator. But for the engulfing it's the other way around, where the two-piece thunder and two-piece collector is better than thunder silver, where it's R1. But when it's not R1, it becomes the second worst. Okay. Now, I've actually mentioned this in my previous video, but for the sake of folks who are watching this without watching the previous video, I'll just quickly run through this again. So four-piece thunder silver here assumes that you're not fighting against slimes or elemental any elemental creatures in futures that are like slimes where they have a specific element permanently there such that your electro will not stay there except for the accession of hydro because of the way electro charge works your electro element will still stay on the character or rather on the anima, enemy should I say anima, enemy enemies so with that your four piece thunder silver effect will still be effective now, I also assume that you have a second Electro character here that's helping you apply Electro before Bell uses Electro attacks. Or another example would be your Electro's, your Bell's electro Elemental skill is still in effect. Because I calculated all of the figures here, assuming that the 4-piece Thunder Silver effect is there. Okay? Uh, if you want to make 4-piece Thunder Silver viable, you should be either using a Mono Electro with Kazuha to buff, or Electro Charge Comps, where there are no reactions that will remove the Electro element. Because hydro, hydro Charge doesn't really remove the Electro Element. It keeps it there for a set period of time until the ticks are done. Until your Elemental Gauge is done. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. I already covered it in previous video. Not going to talk more, much more about it. Now, stats. We are doing 50% CR, 140% CD. Trying to do a realistic artifact permutation. Obviously, you can get better than this. 310% ER for R1. 314.3% ER for R5 So for R1, we are not getting the mass attack cap But it's fine Because if you go mass attack cap, you are sacrificing too much uh, CRCD 314.3% is the value to the threshold to meet To get the cap of 120% attack from R5 And we are also assuming that there's about 25% attack from undefined substance So about 5 rows including base Okay So that's the stats now, third thing I want to talk about is Goblet's damage percentage versus attack percentage for R1. Uh, for four piece emblem, you see that the there's a minus two point nine percent, which means the attack percent is better than damage by two point nine percent. While the rest of the figures, if you don't see a minus, if it's a positive figure instead of a negative figure, positive figure means that damage is better than attack. Negative figure means that attack is better than damage by that percentage. So for the four thunder silver and two piece uh, thunder fury with two piece noblis, not much of a difference really. Two piece gladiator with two piece shiminawa, five point eight percent obviously because it's giving attack percent thirty six percent attack bonus. Obviously, damage goblet will do better with it. And two thunder fury two glads because there is a attack factor here. Eighteen percent attack and also just a reminder, you can also use two piece shiminawa. You get a three percent. This is for R one for R five you'll notice that damage goblet does better throughout okay compared to these figures you know that you notice that damage goblet does better throughout why because you're getting so much more attack from r5 than r1 that is the reason why i also additional er2 <laughs> okay so this is the reason why when you are doing r5 it's better off using electro damage goblet so given these figures okay wait uh, let me just change the music a little. Uh, I kind of need a chill music so that you can hear my voice clearly. Right, so uh, what, I'm, what the conclusion here is, is that all the goblets used for the damage configures here are all using electro goblets. 
other than R1 four-piece emblem, just to make things easier. Okay, R1 four-piece emblem, yeah, the damage difference is substantial enough that I'll say don't use damage, use uh, attack percent. Okay. Now, sense are all ER sense since it's engulfing. You get attack percent from having ER, so you use ER sense for sure. Not to mention all the other bonuses that you get from ER for Bell. Now, realistic artifacts wise, you can have up to about 27 to 37 percent improvement depending on which artifact build it is. So, Emblem obviously has the highest improvement potential again of 37 percent, while the other artifacts are all about 27 percent when you go from 50 slash 114, 50 CR 140 CD to 60 CR 180 CD. Okay, so now that brings me to our final conclusion. To conclude for our TLDR session, to conclude right for engulfing, Emblem is indeed the BIS is uh, also the BIS by far compared to the catch because we are going for higher ER on engulfing. So Emblem's difference against the other artifact builds is significantly larger than the R5 to catch since ER is at 300%, 300 plus for engulfing. I just literally just mentioned that. Okay, now you can also, you, you, what I would recommend is to use, I forgot to add the recommendation here. My recommendation is to use the other other four artifact builds other than Emblem as the placeholder options until you get four piece emblem and this table the tables show you which are the better placeholders so when we say placeholders like what i mentioned in my previous video when we compare for the catch placeholders means that you try to get whatever you try to salvage whatever you can from the existing artifacts that you have now to meet such combinations while you farm for emblem you don't farm for placeholders you farm for the bis okay that's what it means when we say placeholder options for artifact builds now bear in mind that the ranking of placeholders are different for engulfing since engulfing gives a lot of attack percent so that's the reason why two piece gladiators two piece glass with two piece uh, shime drops from the second best to the worst especially when you're using r5 engulfing if you're not using r5 engulfing then it's not so bad at r1 engulfing two piece gladiator with shime still is the second best okay all this is really for r5 engulfing so all the artifacts builds do better with damage percent goblet except R1 4 piece emblem. Okay. The next two points, uh, okay, it's a bit different from the, the catch, so let me just elaborate. So even with Sarah and Kazuha buffs, damage goblet does better across other than R4 F4, R4, R1 4 piece emblem. Again the same thing, right? For R1 4 piece emblem. Because the difference between attack and damage is just too big. So if both Sarah and Bandit buffs are used, or only one used without Kazuha, then obviously Damage Goblet will do better across because these two buff attack while Kazuha buffs damage. So it's like a balancing, balancing skill between buffing attack and buffing damage. So anyway, sorry, that brings me to the end of this video. Uh, it's slightly shorter than my usual math video because we only cover, we're only covering the artifact comparison for R1 engulfing and R5 engulfing. So when it comes to the other weapons, right? The other weapons that I have done five star comparison for, like for example, Skyward Spine, uh, PJWS, as well as Homa. For Homa, you the analysis will be closer to this, while for Skyward Spine, it will be pretty much the same as the catch. While PJWS will lie somewhere in between if we are assuming max stats. If no max stats, then it's uh, the same as the catch. But I do believe that her elemental skill should be able to trigger the on hit effect of PJWS, which means that if you use her elemental skill and then you use your other characters, it should help you get PJWS max stats. Yep, you should help bring it to be closer to the engulfing, I would say, in terms of such a. in terms of the ranking like this. I'm probably not going to do the comparison for that uh, but my next video what I'll do is it's either going to be a, a video on the constellation C4 to 66 or I'll just update my weapon comparison to show if Skyward's spine doesn't prop what's the percentage difference like and for PGWS max stats let's assume that if it can always be there how the prop will be like or how the percentage difference will be like. I actually have the figures there already, so people can already reference that. 
but maybe I'll just add one more column to show the percentage difference so that is how should I put it it's much easier for people to appreciate so anyway those are my next video plans so if you have any other video requests feel free to put inside the suggestions if it's doable and if more people want it and it's of value to more people of course I'll be willing and happy to do it alright so I hope this content has been helpful to you guys and if you like the content Remember to like the video and click subscribe for more. Okay, thanks everyone for watching. Bye.